Hello, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do a video talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. But first, a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for your, your goodness, for your grace, Lord. We thank you that you're in control of this crazy world, that you have a plan, that we can trust you, that your word is true, the prophecies are sure. I thank you, Lord. For forgiveness and I just pray Lord that you will speak through this video tonight that you will, your Holy Spirit will touch the people who hear this that you'll lead people to salvation and encourage the believers who hear this in Jesus name I pray amen all right um, I've had a couple of scriptures on my mind a couple of verses on my mind the last couple of days so I have a feeling it's for somebody besides myself I know it applies to me as well but uh, like I said God's put it on my heart for the last couple of days so I'm guessing that somebody who hears this video tonight needed to hear these verses. First um, John, First John chapter two, verse fifteen and sixteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. Let's go to James <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. But there is some encouragement here. James Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's a word for somebody, I believe. And you do not want to be wrapped up in the cares of this world. We are in the last days. You want to make sure... You are in the faith that you have turned your life over to Jesus Christ. And keep looking up because the signs of the times are here. We're living in the last days. It's got two news stories that I want to go over today. Um, the first one is kind of wars and rumors of wars related. Um, certainly we have that happening all the time. And it's my belief that America as it stands today must collapse before the rise of the Antichrist and the New World Order. Uh, I believe there has to be, really needs to probably be some worldwide chaos where people all around the world are absolutely scared to death. They've been devastated by war or a great natural disaster or economic collapse or quite frankly, probably a combination of all that I just mentioned. Uh, it's coming, no doubt, worldwide economic collapse, world war. I believe a false, fake alien invasion is coming. But I believe that, and I believe that millions are going to disappear. I believe the rapture of the church is going to happen. And then, because of the, because of the devastation caused by that, people will be willing to submit to the authority of the Antichrist and a one world government that will seem to have all of the answers. And I believe the one world religion that's coming will be based on Mother Earth and the environment and the fact that supposedly we all are worshiping the same God and God would not condemn anybody and, and Mother Earth, we got to take care of this earth and there can be no more wars like I believe the great war that's coming that will destroy a lot of people on this earth, kill a lot of people and destroy this earth. Um, <clears throat> I believe that that's coming, and uh, then people will, be, will submit to this one world religion because uh, we can't have any more wars based on religious wars and, and uh, possessions and, and uh, you know, capitalism, and, and uh, we all have to come together and save the planet, so to speak. And along the lines, then, uh, I got an email today from uh, Newsmax magazine, and the headline reads, uh, North Korea shocking warning to America out of Washington DC it says the Pentagon is scrambling to protect America's power grid amid, amid, amid fears of attack by North Korea says former CIA director CIA director James Woolsey according to the Congressional EMP Commission 
A single warhead delivered by North Korean satellite could black out the, the national electric grid and other life-sustaining critical infrastructures for over a year killing nine of ten Americans by starvation and societal collapse. Get that? Killing nine out of ten Americans. Look on YouTube. Look at all the videos of the military movement all around the nation, moving military equipment, trucks, tanks all around the world. They are looking for, waiting for, and anticipating war and civil unrest it would happen no doubt certainly if an EMP happened there would, there would be uh, chaos like you wouldn't believe but um, economic collapse as well uh, President Trump is facing this threat head-on and he is not backing down he told he told Reuters there's a chance that we could end up having a major major conflict with North Korea absolutely North Korea re realizes they can't beat us with brute military force on the conventional battlefield. We are too strong for that. However, however, we do have a weakness that North Korea or other foreign terrorists could use against us, our crumbling electric grid. Uh, former CIA official Dr. Peter Pry warns there is an imminent threat to the national electric grid and not just a single U.S. city. When our electric grid fail, uh, fails, it will be like watching America have a heart attack right before our eyes because when the heart stops pumping, everything shuts down and the patient flatlines. Our enemies could cripple our great country in a matter of minutes without having to fire a single bullet. They could just sit and back and watch as we self-destruct their looting, rioting, and targeting of police officers. It's a frightening idea, but worst of all, it might already be happening. On April 21st, three US, uh, major U.S. cities, New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, experienced virtually simultaneous power outages. Businesses emptied, schools closed, subway commuters were stuck in the ground in the dark. Rumors immediately started flying that a cyber attack, cyber attack had caused all three blackouts. Uh, the official word in San Francisco was that the outage was caused by a fire in a substation. In Los Angeles, high winds were blamed. In New York, an equipment failure uh, perhaps these were the real causes, or maybe these were simultaneous blackouts for dry runs for future attacks. We may never know the truth. All I know is worldwide chaos is coming. The Bible told us it's coming. The Bible told us that most people will die in the final seven-year period of time. That Jesus, Jesus himself said that if the days weren't shortened, if I didn't shorten the days, that no flesh would survive. It is time to make sure you know you are ready, that you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. The most important question you will ever ask, or answer, I should say, the most qu important question you will ever answer in your life is who do you say Jesus is? If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you're willing to turn to him and ask him to forgive you, and he died for you and shed his blood, you will be saved. Have to, everybody on this planet will answer that question. Who is Jesus Christ? Your eternal future, your e eternal destination determined, is determined by your answer to that question. And I have uh, one more sad, amazing news story to, to uh, report. Uh, let me turn to it here. I saw the New York Post. I've seen it covered in several other sources today. Uh, Vatican cops bust drug-fueled gay orgy at home of Cardinal's aid. I'll read that again. Vatican cops bust a drug-fueled gay orgy at the home of a Cardinal's aid. It says, Vatican police raided a drug-fueled gay sex party at the apartment of an aide to one of Pope Francis's key advisors. According to an explosive new report, the Holy Father is, in, is enraged. A Holy Father, so to speak. I don't, I don't refer to the Pope as a Holy Father, but uh, I would say that uh, Pope Francis, if he's enraged, is probably because he wasn't invi invited, apparently. But it goes on to say the Holy Father is enraged since the home inhabited by Cardinal Francesco uh, Copa, Coppola Mario's secretary belongs to the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, the arm charged with tackling clerical sex abuse, ironically. Cops raided the apartment in late June after neighbors complained about multiple people visiting the apartment and acting strangely. 
Inside, police said they found men getting high and getting it on, the paper reports. They arrested the priest after taking him to a clinic to detox from the drugs he'd ingested, presumably on drug charges as gay sex isn't illegal in Vatican City. He is now a spirit in, on a spiritual retreat in a convent in Italy, the paper reports. Uh, Cocklomero had, re had recommended a secretary for a promotion to bishop, but the prospects aren't looking good following this incident and two previously alleged drug overdoses. Pope Francis may force the cardinal into retirement. The scandal comes just a week after the Vatican was rocked by sex abuse allegations against high-ranking cardinal George Pell. You know, it just makes me sad. And uh, honestly, it almost makes me sick. Every time I hear a Catholic, and I was raised Catholic, I went to 12 years of Catholic school, started reading the Bible for myself, though, and turned to Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was 16 years old. But as a Catholic, and I have friends and family that are Catholics, and they tell me all the time, and I hear all the time, that uh, the Catholic Church is the one true church of Jesus Christ. He started the Catholic Church. No, that is a lie that Catholics believe. Jesus Christ started his church based on himself. He is our chief cornerstone. He is who our salvation is. He is our sal who, who our salvation comes through, not through religious rituals and sacraments and confessing to a priest and Vatican authority. I believe wholeheartedly that the wicked Vatican system is Mystery Babylon in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Let's turn there now. <sighs> Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 to 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. Excuse me. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with precious with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Verse uh, <clears throat> 9 and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That is Vatican City, where all the kings of the earth go to bow down to Pope Francis. And it is an only city that is also its own country, its own sovereign country within the walls of of Vatican City, which make Pope, makes Pope Francis a king. It is the only city that reigns over the kings of the earth. And let's go back to Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Abominations and fornication, like what was going on in, the, in that apartment at the Vatican. And drunk with the blood of the saints. Look at what happened through the history of the Catholic Church and persecuting Christians, burning them at the stake for wanting to read the Bible, for not wanting to bow down to the Pope and to submit to the papal authority and the authority of the so-called Mother Church, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. True Bible-believing Christians who put their faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, not of church membership and sacraments and Eucharist, but your personal decision to follow Jesus Christ and accept his blood on the cross as forgiveness of your sin. That's how you are saved. Millions of people... Billions of people throughout the ages have been fooled and fallen under the wicked Vatican system. And Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 says, 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Verse 5, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. That golden cup. I challenge you to Google Vatican City, uh, Google uh, Papal Masses, <laughs> just Google Roman Catholicism. Look at in images, look at images, and look at pictures of the Vatican, of the Pope holding up the golden cup with the gold all around him, and the precious stones and pearls, and the cardinals, and the bishops sitting there arrayed in purple and scarlet. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. He's coming soon. We are, we are in the very last days. And the Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's not just Catholicism. It, it's, it's, not, it's not about being a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or anything like that. It has nothing to do with the local church or your or denomination it's your decision to follow jesus christ and trust him and believe the gospel that jesus died for you he shed his blood and he rose again if you have not done so today is a day of salvation and if you're trusting in your own good works or you're going to church or your church membership or anything you've done that will not save you turn to jesus christ and keep looking up he's coming soon god bless everyone